What's up guys, it's Ben Bonk, and welcome to another video, and in this tutorial series, I will be showing you how to make a simple sliding kind of puzzle game, which is really, really easy to make, and it's a great beginner project, and so much you can do with it, and it actually is some pretty fun gameplay. So first thing I'm going to do is make a new Unity project, and I'm going to make a game object called Player. On this, I'm just going to add a sprite render, and for the sprite, I really like to keep a 1x1 one one pixel that I can use just for a simple square, as... I don't really feel like make, making too much art for this game. So I just have this one by one pixel, which I'll leave a download in the description if I remember. I'll drag that into the sprite section. And now you can see this is really, really small. Even if I double click, you can barely see it. So what I'm going to do is just click on our player and we're going to right click. And again, if you don't want to make a game object, just right click in the hierarchy and create an empty game object. And then add component and sprite renderer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the scale tour, scale tool or the R on your keyboard, the uh, hot key to it. And I'm just going to scale this up a bunch, like really get it so I can see the whole entire square. And so you can see mine's about 82 on all the scale X, Y, and Z. And so now I have a just simple cube, which is going to be our player. I'm actually going to scale this down a bit just so it's a nice and round shape. So first thing I really want to do is get some nice player movement uh, set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a script and let's just call this uh, player and hit new script. So now we're going to hit create and add and now it'll be create a new script. Now we can access this by double clicking here or double clicking right in our uh, assets folder. I'm going to double click to open up that. And as you can see, it is going to open. And now we have this script. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few variables just to get running. So first thing we're going to do is make a public float variable called speed. And sorry, that is be public float called speed. And this is what we're going to do to change around our player's speed. We're also going to make a public bool called can move. And we're going to set this equal to false. And then we're also going to make a public rigid body 2D, pressing tab, just to autocomplete that, called RB. So I'm just gonna make a quick cut right here. I just wanna explain some things for any of uh, more new programmers. Basically, public allows us to access that uh, variable from our inspector, and so we can change it around. So that's what that's doing. And then a float uh, type of variable stores, uh, basically it's an integer, but with decimals. And so we can use that for our speed, all that kind of stuff. And then also a boolean, if you don't know, it's a bool, and it just returns a true or false value. And then also rigid body is used to access the rigid body. So now we have some variables, and this is really, really simple code. And if you're new to Unity, it should be somewhat uh, easy, maybe possibly to understand if you have a little bit of programming experience. So our start uh, method, which is called right when the start of the, when it gets loaded, we're gonna say our rigid body, which, or RB is equal to game object dot get component and then we're going to make some angle brackets and make it rigid body 2d and then since it is kind of like a function we have to add these open parentheses at the end and always end with a semicolon so now this is just saying this rigid body 2d is the rigid body 2d on our uh, uh, game object or our player and we're gonna make sure this is going to be a lowercase g because it means what the game object that is on the on the script so yeah then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, make a little bit of some code in the update function. And so we're going to use our rigid body to add some like velocity when we press the up arrow or the down arrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if make some uh, uh, brackets. I'm sorry, I can't talk. Or what do you what do you call them? Um, and we're going to say if input dot get key down and make some more we're gonna say key code here key code dot up arrow or you could do w for this and we're gonna make our parentheses and we're gonna say rb dot velocity is equal to a new vector two and then in this vector two we're gonna say zero comma one then we're gonna also multiply this one with uh by speed 
and by time dot delta time. So what this is basically doing is this is saying our rigid when we press the up arrow, which is input dot get key down key code dot up arrow, you change this to whatever you want. Our rigid body's velocity, which we can use to make movement and all that kind of stuff, is equal to a new vector two, which are basically a vector two stores two values, an x and a y value. So when we press the up arrow, it'll make no force, it'll add no force on the x axis, but add one force uh, up on the y axis. So it'll kind of push our player up. If we want to push our player down, we just add a negative, and that's kind of how it works. And then to this one value, we're going to multiply it by our speed and then multiply that by time dot delta time, which basically says whenever our whenever we have since this update is called once every frame, one computer might have 120 frames. And so that could make it a little bit faster. So you want to say that it just calls once every single frame, something like that. So that's basically just going to get our up arrow working. Now we can basically just copy this and then paste it down again. Instead of doing this, change this to, let's say, down arrow, which is going to do our down arrow, and let's make that negative one, so it'll go down instead of up. Then we can copy this again, or actually, we don't really have to copy it again. Let's change this to, let's say, left arrow. Okay, sorry for that cut. We're going to make this key code dot left arrow, and what we're going to do here is do the same thing. Let's step in, have, we want to add some uh, force on the x-axis instead of the y-axis, make this negative one and make this zero. Then let's just copy our speed and our delta time. Subtract so that because we don't want to multiply that by our zero, we want to multiply it by our negative one value. And so now it's just going to do the same thing, make a new vector two, which again stores x and y, and multiply negative one by the speed and the delta time. Then again, just paste again, or not paste again, just to copy that again. And then now change this again to right arrow. And as you guessed, we're gonna change this to just a positive one. And that's pretty much it. Now let's head back into our Unity project. And on our player, we should have our script assigned. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few things to our player. First thing we are going to do is make a rigid body 2D, which is going to basically allow us to manipulate physics and all that kind of stuff inside of Unity, which is really, really good for pretty much any project you need a rigid body. Now let's change this <coughs> and let's just drag this into our RB slot. So now we know that this rigid body is the rigid body that we want to access is the rigid body on our player. Then let's also um, go over here and let's make our speed something like 1000, something like that. But once we click play, you'll notice a bit of a problem. Our player just automatically falls down. So we're gonna fix that by going into our rigid body and change the gravity skill to zero. So now our player shouldn't be affected by gravity. Now you can see when we do do that, uh, our player is fine. And now we kind of have some snake-like controls. You can use the arrow keys to control our player, but this isn't what we really want. We want our player to be able only be able to move when he is on kind of a uh, wall, or let's say. But this is really good simple controls for if you want to make a kind of snake kind of game. So let's fix this by firstly adding a box collider 2D and not a skybox, a box collider 2D, and it should pre-make a um, box or anything. And if you're not using a box for your game. You can just edit this collider and you can make it maybe a polygon collider or a circle collider something like that any kind of collider will work and um what we're going to do if, you, if it's kind of messed up it should be good for you but you can also edit collider and just drag these kind of things around okay so now that we have our player moving around and all that kind of stuff let's make some walls just so he can only move when he's on the walls so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate our player by right clicking and going to duplicate or just pressing control plus D and let's just get rid of some of these components just so we have this for easy access. Now let's just move over our player just somewhere over here and again I kind of changed my game view just by dragging onto the side just so I can see this and make sure this aspect is at 16 to 9 or 1080p if you have something like that. And so now what I'm going to do is I have just this kind of game object and I'm going to add the box collider actually back and we're going to go to the sprite render and go to the rec tool and just drag this straight up so kind of a wall and we can see that forming in our game view. 
and now I'm going to rename this to wall, press enter, and it should be good. Now I'm just going to duplicate this wall, I'm going to go to the move tool, just drag it all the way to the right, and I'm zooming in, I'm just going to drag that as so. And you can use these kind of axes just to move it around, or just to move on X or the Y axis. I'm going to do this wall now, I'm going to change the rotation to 90 degrees, move it up here so you can make sure you can see it, and just going to use the rec tool again just to drag it out like that. And I'm going to do put this wall and go to move tool or press W and just move this one down as so. And so now we go into our game view, we can, oops. Uh, if we go into our game view, we can see that we have some nice walls, and these walls are kind of, uh, they're a bit thick, kind of, for, for my walls. So I'm just going to go into the rec view and just kind of drag these down each a little bit. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. We we're making a bigger game, but just for this small little game, anything should be too, not too bad. And it's going to scale this player down a little bit also. By going to the scale tool. Um... Now when we click on our player, you can see that he can collide on these walls because we have these kind of box colliders. And so when we go on our walls actually, you can go and open up our box collider, hit edit collider, and you can see all these uh, where the actual collider is. So now again, if we go into play view, he can go around and collide on these walls, but he can still go, let's say, right and then go up whenever he wants. And so it's not really... Um, you, I kind of want him to slide only on the walls, get there, then he can move again, then get there, and then he can move again. And that kind of, you know, kind of feel game. We have to hit a wall in order to move. And so we can accomplish this by going back into Visual Studio, and we can go and use our can move function. And so our can move is going to be able to say, like, if we want our person to be able to move, and so when he's going to say, when our player is on a wall, he can move. So let's do this, and instead let's say, in our update, let's make a new if statement covering all of this and say if can move is identical to equal signs to true, then we're going to make our brackets, and then we're going to copy and paste all of this code into our little uh, can move uh, if block. And so now we're just going to control S to save this. And don't forget to save. I'm sorry if I forgot to say this. Make sure to control S if you haven't or forgot to say that. To control plus S or just file and it should be save. Or yeah, file and just save assets. But so you always want to do that if your script isn't working. And you can see if you made an edit, save that asterisk. And then let's see now you didn't save. And so now we're going to say if can move equals to true, then you can move. So right now, we have set our can move to false. So if we go back into Unity, we should be able to see that we can't actually move at all because our can move is equal to false. And actually, while we're in play mode, we can hit on our player and you'll see can move is not checked in this little boolean. So yeah, but if we do check it, we should be able to move. And so yeah, that works perfectly. So now we are going to make some collision things and we are going to uh, say like when we're colliding with something we can move. So I'm just going to make a new void which is some doesn't a uh, function that doesn't return anything uh, on collision enter 2d hit the down arrow and tab and should automatically make it for you. So now we can see these two things which is kind of like our parameters inside. And what we're going to do, we're going to say, if our collision, which is the thing that we're like, our collision, which we collide with, dot game object, like if the thing that we collide with, if it's game object, if it's game object's tag is equal to, let's say, wall, then we're going to say, so this is basically saying, if our thing that we collide with, if it's tag is equal to wall, then we can say can move is equal to true and make sure that's just equal not two equal signs and so basically that's saying if our we're climbing with a wall then yeah we can move perfectly 
But now, once we do that, we can just move whenever we want. And so we can, so we can, let's say we cannot move, but then, yeah. We want to make sure that we want to set it when you're not on a wall and when you're just in the air, you can't move. So we'll make another void, void on collision exit 2D, press tab, automatically make that. And so when we're, when we leave our collision, we say can move is equal to false. And, oop, and that should be false. And so now we're saying basically on our collision exit, so after we done colliding with this, we can't move. And so when we go back into our little game, let's just put our player kind of on a wall so we can move. And actually before we do that, a more smart thing is do remember to control S to save that. A uh, really big problem sometimes when you start off. And then we need to give our uh, walls a tag. And so let's go to the tag section. Let's go to add tag. Go to this tags place and hit plus. And let's just minus out of that and just hit wall. Then we can save up that. Now we have a new wall tag. And we can go to select and select shift to select one of these walls. Select shifts and then select all of them. So we have all of our walls. Go to tag and wall. So now every single one of these walls has a tag of wall. And so now when we go on here, we should let's actually make this a bit closer so we're colliding with it. <coughs> I should be able to see, and I can see this can move equals to true. Then, then we, as you can see, we are moving. And if you look over here, our can move is going from it's up to check. When I hit right, it goes to off and then it goes to up again. So when I go to the left and I try to move up by pressing the up arrow, I can't do that. And so that works perfectly, but I can go like this and kind of, but I can't, you know, just free roam wherever I want. So that's a really, really simple and really good beginner kind of strategy of how to make some really, really simple movement controls just for a sliding kind of puzzle game. So now you can only move uh, when you're uh, like basically completely still, which is really cool. And so that's going to really wrap up our first video on our sliding line and puzzle game. Just, just setting up the game, getting things uh, set up. And then the next video, we are going to go over some uh, win states and some death states, restarting the level and that kind of stuff. So I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, kind of make some tutorials. I'm not sure if they're the best kind of my first tutorial series and so i'm not really sure how it's going but if you're gonna leave some feedback that'd be great and i'll see you guys in the next video if you ever have a question also just feel free to comment and i'm sure i can answer it okay bye